Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 3rd of May and it's day 11 on the allotment. Or at least it would be. Um, there's an awful lot of rain that's been falling and uh, I've actually been here for over a couple of hours and all I've done is really taken shelter in the shed and uh, drink tea. Um, we do seem to be getting a little bit of clear sky now, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm really pleased about that. And so we are hoping to get some work done. Um, there's a lot of digging to do. There's a few things I've found out as well. Right, well, um, I suppose I should show you a few things. So uh, first of all, let me show you how we're getting on at home. <laughs> What you can see here is uh, at the front I've got my cucumbers. There's three of them that have uh, germinated. Then we've got two rows of four of the kohlrabi. Now the rest of this actually uh, got knocked on the floor by uh, a ginger monster called Oscar, who's also a cat. Um, so I'm not sure what these others are but they haven't germinated. What I do know for certain is that my butternut squash is not amongst those that have come through. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of giving up on those and I think that it probably was not a great idea to put the butternut squash in the Goya pellets because they were too small. Uh, the pellets were too small for the size of the, the seed. But I have got some more and I'm still hopeful for that. Over here at the front now, I've put another two rows of sweet corn in there. So the first four rows are all sweet corn. And you can see I've got one, two, three, four that have come through. There's four that haven't there. And then I've just planted, literally just planted, um, a few, um, eight more. Then what we've got, these are my giant sunflowers. Now, uh, I miscounted with this and I need more sweet corn than I've actually got room for. So I was kind of hoping that they hadn't all germinated. If one of those doesn't make it, and there's one here that looks as if it might have a bit of a an issue, um, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see what's uh, what's what's going on. And uh, if there is room for another sweet corn, then I'll put another sweet corn in. These are my marigolds. Now, I don't know how hardy marigolds are. There are some ornamentals on my plot and they're fine. They, they don't have an issue with frost. So I'm wondering if I maybe take these up today and uh, see about uh, getting them planted out. If anybody knows about marigolds and how hardy they are, can you drop me a note and let me know because I've never grown these before. This is a smaller variety of sunflower. Um, these ones give sort of lots of little um, sunflower um, flowers, heads, um, rather than one big one. So it's uh, another variety there, and we're thinking of planting these indoors. As I come round, though, uh, these are my two courgettes, which are getting really big now, and I'm looking forward to planting these out once uh, the danger of frost has gone. I think it's going to be another couple of weeks, so... Uh, yeah, we'll hang on to those for a bit, but they're probably ready to be potted on again. In front, there are butternut squash. Now, they haven't germinated yet. These are kind of like my last throw of the dice for butternut squash. So I'm really hoping that they do germinate, or at least one germinates. Um, they've been in for a couple of weeks. I'm going to give it another week, and then I'm going to assume nothing's going to happen. Um... But uh, yeah, I need to look out for these because I would like some butternut squash this year. This is quite exciting because one of the giant pumpkins has come through. I haven't got anything with these um, marrows yet. But uh, Chris, one of your giant pumpkins, that's come through. So uh, thank you for that. I'm really pleased. This is my bean collection for the year. I've got to try and remember which way around these are. I think that's one of the giganti beans at the end, which would mean that these were berlotti beans. Because um, I think I've got uh, runner beans here, and then just after, uh, where well, you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six of them, I think they are French beans. Now, of course, the French beans and 
the runner beans are seed that I saved. There's lots going on there. So uh, the thing that I need to keep an eye on are the beans and the sweet corn. So I want to make sure I've got exactly 25 sweet corn to make you know, a, a, a five square. So uh, I'll be keeping an eye on that. And of course, the other thing is the runner beans, which I don't think have germinated yet and the French beans, which I don't think have germinated yet. Both of those were seed that I saved. Now, I may have done something wrong. I just may not have saved viable seed. I may have completely messed it up. So I'll keep an eye on that so that then I can get some others in quick. Fortunately, they're very sort of uh, fast growing plants. So uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> I am gonna start by showing you this rhubarb patch. It is enormous, and this is the small one. Um, I'm absolutely blown away by how absolutely wonderful this is. Um, it's certainly an amazing start, and uh, that is a rhubarb patch to be proud of, and it's not even the biggest one. Those of you who are quick to notice things, will notice that I've actually uh, tidied up my potato buckets here. Um, I'm quite surprised actually, because I thought this one would have been frostbitten, but apparently not. Um, we've even got signs elsewhere of uh, potatoes coming through with some of the earlies. So uh, you can see here, these are, the Maris Bard, and uh, they're one of the super early, so they're getting on and doing their stuff. I'm really excited about these lilies. They're definitely coming through. They're not getting frostbitten. Um, the people at the Edible Garden Show that told me that they were hardy seem to be uh, telling me absolutely the truth. Yes, I need to cut the grass, but uh, we're going to have some nice ornamentals there soon, which is great. Thanks to everybody who gave me advice about the strawberries. Yes, some runners would be good. Um, as you can see, we've actually got a few flowers forming now. These are the onions. Now, you can see that and so can I. I thought it was, and it is, it's mare's tail. Now, we're gonna have a chat about mare's tail through the weekend, but uh, this stuff is nasty. It's almost impossible to get rid of just by weeding. It's either got to be done, and these roots go on for seven foot. And in this fine soil, it's just gonna go rampant. So I think we may have drastic measures in store here if we're going to avoid, it's, it's everywhere. And it's coming through and it's gonna dominate and I think I may have to do something that I'm not particularly keen on doing, but I don't believe there's another alternative. Apart from that, we've got onions that are really starting to grow up. Now, some of them haven't liked the weather. Some of them have flopped over. Some of them have, some of them are taking. Um, given what a rotten start we had with onions, there's enough there to keep me happy. So that's good. If there is a theme today, it's that the weeds have come. So uh, with uh, any good weather there is when it isn't raining or even if it is raining, I've got to get hoeing. Um, I'm hoping that I can make some space to put some leeks in just on the borders here. Because obviously leeks and garlic like each other. And uh, I would really like to get those leeks in the ground, but uh, everything's got to be weeded there before I do anything. These are ornamentals. Now, are these marigolds? I think they might be marigolds. They're not the marigolds that I'm growing at home. And uh, as you see, they're very weedy as well. Um, there is mare's tail in there. So uh, it's, uh, it's not a brilliant solution, but uh, it's one that's doing for now. And it gives a bit of color on the plot and it brings a few bees in. So uh, that's really good. Um, this is also where I'm going to be putting my marigolds when I bring them down. So I do want to clear this as soon as possible. Um, I'll be putting some here and then I'll be putting some in the brassica section. Well, comfrey. 
you're definitely growing up. Now I was told, I think, you know, a foot and a half, two foot high. It's not that yet, so I'm still going to let that go. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting that and making comfrey tea, which is going to be my main fertilizer for this year for pretty much everything. The brassica bed hasn't been dug. The, uh, the ground is still really wet and it hasn't even dried out where I rough dug it for those couple of foot uh, last week. But uh, I need to get in there. The bean bed needs weeding and there aren't even any beans in there. You've seen uh, the beans at home. I've got a couple sneaking through. But, uh, well, you know, it's all about getting things ready. The peas have come through the uh, nasty weather and they're climbing up. So happy about that. I probably want to get some of the cucumbers in at this end, but I also want to put more peas in because that's not many peas. And if you look at this fruit forest, everything's forming. Now, uh, quite rightly, people are saying you want to get a net over this, um, otherwise the birds will get them. Well, I mean, the birds won't get them until they are ripe, and they're not going to ripen until June. So I have a few weeks, but yes, you're absolutely right. And I do want to get some debris netting over this to uh, discourage the birds from eating the lot. So uh, thank you to Al and others who made that point to me. I haven't forgotten. I think there is no rush and I think we'll be all right. They're certainly not ready yet and they're not likely to be ready for another eight weeks, I think. But uh, yeah. We got some currants on the way. Now, if you've been following this, somewhere in there, can you see him? There's Cheeky the gnome. So the rhubarb is bigger than Cheeky now. This is actually how big it is. I mean, I have never seen rhubarb like this before in my life. I'm amazed. I wish I knew what the variety was. I wish I could take credit for growing it, um, but I'm certainly happy it's here. <laughs> There's something I want to show you here because you can see that the peas are doing well. I showed you those earlier. And you can see that I had the area dug for a bean bed. Well, I'm really pleased to say that now not only is there a bean bed, but there is part of a bed for brassicas. That's big enough to have paths in between them and still manage to get some brassicas in. Now I haven't dug all of it, but you see that the cover's been pulled right back. There isn't that much more to go. And I've been through this with a fine tooth comb. Um, I have pulled out bindweed. I have pulled out cooch grass. I have pulled out mare's tail. I have pulled out potatoes. Um, I've pulled out enough potatoes so that uh, they're, they're, there's a complete crop there. But uh, it's done. I'm really pleased about it. And what that means is that next weekend I can start not just to put my bean poles up, but I can think about planting out my brassicas. And that's a great feeling, a really great feeling. It feels really good to say this, but this is my harvest for the day for the day. Look at that rhubarb. There's uh, seven sticks here. Some of it's really pink and looking very, very juicy. So I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> well, that really does bring us towards the end of the day now. Um, there's been, there has been progress and that's really good. I feel really, really pleased that I'm getting brassicas dug. Uh, next week, I think, is all going to be about getting some brassicas in whilst I carry on to finish it and also putting up the bean poles for, for the beans. So uh, there's going to be plenty there to keep me occupied next week. I'm more or less on, on target. Um, I think I'm going to have to use some kind of chemical on the, the mare's tail. And I saw a technique that... Um, Mr. Sam, the allotment man, was using, whereby you don't sort of spray it on the ground. What you do is you actually spray it onto the leaves or you, you dip the, uh, the leaves or the plant into the solution. So it sucks it all down into its roots and dies without poisoning your soil. Um, with mare's tail, I don't think I have another option. 
because to dig it out is going to be really, really difficult. So uh, if you have thoughts on that, and more importantly, if you've done it, um, I know everyone says, oh, I wouldn't put glyphosate down, but have you ever had mare's tail? And what did you do? So I'm really interested to hear from people that have done this um, rather than um, you know, just what you think, um, having never experienced it, because this is a biggie. Uh, next to knotweed, I think this is probably about as big as you can get. And so I, I'm really keen to get you know, the, the best advice I can what to do next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye.